Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress. I hope you're all doing really well. So today's video is gonna be a random um, sewing chat, really, with a bit of knitting chat and crochet chat as well. <laughs> so this wasn't necessarily the video that I was planning to record this week. I've had such a busy, strange week. Well, not really strange, but if you're in the UK, then you'll know that um, the teachers have been striking here and it hasn't affected all schools, but um, a lot of children have had to be home from school on a couple of days, or two days this week. And I've also been really busy with exciting work things as well, some of which I can share and some I can't at the moment. So yeah, this week was a bit crazy and I had, as I say, planned to film a different video, but now I'm here filming um, a random sewing and knitting video where I'm just going to talk a little bit about what I've got on, what I'm making at the moment, a couple of finished things and new fabrics and things like that and I really hope that'll be okay. <laughs> um, I know some people like these random videos and I know probably for some people they're a bit disjointed and weird so yeah I really hope you'll still enjoy the video. So if you are new to my channel I'm Sally, I love to talk about all things sewing, knitting and creating. If you're into sewing and knitting and making as well, I'd love you to consider subscribing to my channel. I post regularly and upload every Sunday at 8 a.m. So let's get straight into what I have to talk to you about today. So first of all today, I'm actually gonna talk about knitting. So what I'll do actually, which I've been meaning to try and do for some time and get better at, is actually put some timestamps below the video. So if you're not interested in knitting, I'll put a timestamp below where you can just fast forward onto the sewing. And likewise, if you just like the knitting, then you can avoid the sewing. <laughs> so first of all, I will share with you what I'm wearing. And what I'm wearing today is actually my finished and blocked novice sweater by Petite Knit. So you'll know if you've followed me for a while that for ages I have had a big thing in my head about not being able to knit in the round and um, my challenge to myself for this year, or actually it has been for the past few years and it's only been this year that I've actually done it, is to knit a sweater in the round. So I decided to start the year in January where I needed a new knitting project and just sort of bite the bullet and go for it and try and knit a sweater in the round. I have knit a petite knit pattern before and I know how good the instructions are and um, I know that a lot of people recommended petite knit and this novice sweater so I thought this pattern would be a good one to try out my first sweater knitted in the round. And I have to say it's so silly because once I started it, once I got into it, I didn't know what I was worried about. It was so easy to do. And in fact, as everyone had told me, it was probably easier to do really than um, knitting back and forth because this jumper is actually knitting stocking stitch. And it turns out all you do to knit stocking stitch in the round is just knit, so garter stitch all the time. And you're just knitting round and round and round and round and it produces a garter stitch. <laughs> Yeah, it turns out that um, I don't know why I had such a thing in my head about it, but um, yeah, I've managed to overcome it now and knit my first sweater in the round. So here it is. Um, I'll just stand up so you can see it finished. I've kind of got it tucked up into my jeans. It comes about there on me. So as I say, this sweater has been blocked now. I ended up soap blocking it um, with a little bit of my no rinse hand wash, which I love and I got from Amazon. So you just need a tiny amount of this wash and you soak the garment. And then I um, stretched it out to dry it because I did find that when I finished the jumper, it was coming up really fitted. It's still quite fitted now actually, but it's less fitted than it was when I had initially finished it. So yeah, I gave it a good stretch out and pinned it all out to dry. And it actually dried really quickly and it soaked really well. I was a little bit apprehensive of soaking this wool because um, it is quite fluffy and I was really worried that it was gonna really badly stretch out but it actually did and it sprung back nicely. And I think just pinning it out a little bit wider than it was has given me a bit extra room with it. I think I probably could have sized up again actually, because I do quite like a big oversized sort of fluffy jumper. But yeah, as it is, it's fine and I'm really pleased with it. It's actually knitting Drops Air yarn. It's the first time I've used Drops Air. And um, I had heard actually that with wear, Drops Air yarn does stretch out and um, grow a little bit. So it still might grow even bigger. I'm gonna wear it and see how I go. I'm also gonna see how I go with this neckline. As you know, I'm not always a big fan of 
tight things around my neck. Um, but the good thing about this pattern is that you can wear it up like this or you can tuck it in like this and you can actually sew the collar around inside so that you just have this kind of crew neck rather than the high neck. I do quite like how the high neck looks but as I say it does bother me sometimes when I feel a bit choked around my neck. So yeah on the whole I'm really really happy with this novice sweater. If you're like me and you are nervous of knitting in the round I would highly recommend this pattern. The instructions are great and it's a really simple style and simple design so yeah so pleased to have had that done and I feel as though it's kind of opened up a world of new knitting patterns to me now because I always used to discount any kind of sweater that was knit in the round and think oh I'm not doing that I can't do that but now I'm thinking maybe it's not as difficult as I had originally thought so that's exciting. So once I'd finished knitting this sweater I was straight on to my next project and the next thing I knit was this cute little bunny. So I shared recently that um, I've been to John Lewis with my daughter and we were in the haberdashery section and we found the pattern for this little bunny and she fell in love with it and asked me to knit it and um, it was such a fun quick and easy project to do. So this is the pattern that it's knit from, it's a King Cole pattern and it's made in truffle yarn so it's that really fluffy yarn and um, when it's knit up it just looks like fur really, you can't see any of the knit stitches in it because it's so fluffy and so furry so it is a little bit tricky to knit with until you get used to it because you can't really see what you're knitting but then once you get into it it's fine. Um, so yeah we went for the smaller bunny and um, I made this bunny over a weekend really slowly, I didn't rush it or spend ages on it or anything, I just knit it here and there in the evenings and it came together really quickly so I was so happy with this. I just think it's really cute and such a simple little project to do and um, my daughter's got a couple of those jelly cat toys I don't know if you know what I mean if you're in the UK they're just they're this kind of shape really really floppy and really fluffy and it reminded me of one of those so I'm already on to my second bunny now because we decided we needed another one in alternating colours so I'm actually knitting one at the moment with the white yarn for the body and then um, he or she is going to have brown ears and a brown tail so this was pretty easy to knit really, the actual knitting is fine as I say I think it's just sort of getting your head around the yarn where you can't see what you're doing really but yeah I would really recommend this pattern so as you can see it's got some um, larger versions of the bunnies that you can knit as well but we really like the little cute ones and I think this would be a really good Easter project so if you do have anyone to make for for Easter or Easter presents to make, this would make a really cute little present I think and as I say they're really quick to knit up. So all I've done so far for the white one is the body, so that's what it looks like so far and I think it's easier with sewing toys if you stuff as you go, so every time I make a body part I'm stuffing it and sewing it up as I go along because I hate it if you knit up a toy and then you've got all the stuffing and all the sewing up to do at the end, so it felt as though it came together much quicker doing it that way. So I'm hoping to get that one finished and done that soon and I'll show you that one when it's finished. Another thing I'm working on in knitting is I've started the Rosa Cardigan now by a long Canna. So I did mention this one recently as well and say that I wanted to knit it. So I've seen lots of lovely versions of this around on Instagram and um, places like that. <laughs> um, there are so many different lovely versions around and I really felt as though I wanted to knit it up. It's quite a simple style cardigan so it's mainly stocking stitch, um, it's knit top down and then the increases for the yoke line, I think that's what it is, are made using this lace pattern here so the yarn overs and the holes make the raglan increases. Um, it's quite a cropped cardigan which I thought would be really nice for wearing over dresses and things in the summer. I don't have many crop cardigans so I really wanted to have something a little bit shorter that sort of came to my waistline rather than longer. So yeah I'm really enjoying knitting this so far, I haven't got too far with it at the moment. So here's where I'm at with it at the moment, you probably won't be able to see this very well because it is curling up quite a lot on my needles. So I've just finished the first set of raglan increases and hopefully you can see the lace design there. So it did take me a little while actually for some reason to get my head around the lace pattern. It's done on a chart but it's also written as well. I can't seem to get my head around charts very well so I'm actually using the written lace instructions. 
and at the moment that's working really nicely for me. I'm just hoping that I am gonna like wearing this yarn. This is a Serdar Country Cotton, or Country Classic I think it is. So it's a double knitting yarn and it's just got a little bit of a brush texture to it but it is quite kind of sturdy and not very drapey so I do hope that I'm going to enjoy wearing it once it's done. It's a really nice colour, it's just an off-white colour which I think will go with quite a lot of things. So yeah, really enjoying knitting that at the moment. I did get myself in a little bit of a mess actually <laughs> um, when I came to the end of the raglan, the first section of raglan increases. I thought I'd done the whole thing wrong and I almost undid it all and then left it a little while. I spoke to a lovely lady called Judy on Instagram, if you're watching, thank you so much for your help, <laughs> um, who I just chatted to a little bit about the pattern and realised then that I was fine all along and hadn't done anything wrong. So I'm really glad that I didn't go ahead and undo all of that. It's really funny sometimes how you just can't get your head around things until you've done them, isn't it? Because I was overthinking and thinking that I wouldn't have enough stitches um, for my front section when I came to the end of the raglan increase section. But once I'd done it, I realised that I just miscalculated in my own head and I was fine all along and it all worked out in the end. So that was very silly of me. <laughs> but yeah, enjoying this one. I do enjoy knitting things top down actually. And I'm enjoying having the kind of contrast between the little bit of lace and the nice and easy stocking stitch. So I'll keep you updated on that one as well. So another one in kind of yarn craft before I move on to sewing is I've started another crochet project. So this is my daughter keeping me busy again. We were out one day and we popped into Hobbycraft and she spied this really pretty chunky, it's kind of a chenille type yarn, it's really spongy and she has got a pastel themed desk area in her room with a chair <laughs> and she said oh mummy could you knit me a blanket from this yarn that I can put over my desk chair and I was looking for another crochet project actually because when I was crocheting the big blanket that I've just finished for our lounge I just enjoyed being able to switch between knitting and crochet. I find crochet really calming to do actually now that I'm a little bit more into it. So I decided that I would just start a blanket for her that I could just pick up and put down whenever. And this is what it's looking like so far. So I'm making this one slightly differently. Um, the previous blanket that I made, I'll put a picture in here, I actually made going backwards and forwards in lines. Um, it might sound silly but I for ages couldn't get my head around how to make granny squares. So I've been watching a few YouTube tutorials on how to make granny squares and kind of taught myself the concept of how to do it. So this one is made slightly differently to that one in that it's just a big granny square. So I'm going from the middle outwards um, and just crocheting round and round and that's working really nicely at the moment. I think this is quite a um, bobbly, squishy kind of yarn. So it doesn't look that even to me when I hold it up like that. It doesn't really matter anyway, it's going to be a blanket that's going to go over a chair and it's so soft and squishy. It's really lovely to crochet with because it just feels really velvety and um, yeah I'm really enjoying picking that up. I did quite a bit of it last night actually when I was just sitting watching the telly and I just find crochet as I say just really calming and really mindful to do. Obviously knitting is too but yeah for some reason I just feel like it's just so lovely to sit and crochet and you don't have to think about it much just going round and round there's not a lot to do when you're doing a blanket so it's really nice to have that to pick up and put down. So this is the yarn that it's made from it's called Flutterby Chunky and it's by James C. Brett and this was just from Hobbycraft. They did have a few different shades actually but as I say this one suits her bedroom perfectly so we went for that one. I've got quite a few balls of this actually I think I got about five balls it wasn't too expensive um, so we'll see how big this blanket actually turns out. I guess as the square gets bigger, then it's going to use more and more yarn, isn't it? But um, yeah, that's that one. So I'll move on to sewing then. And um, I've got a few things to share in sewing, just a couple of plans and some new fabrics and things. Um, so I have been sewing, but it's been sort of work related sewing rather than sewing for my own wardrobe. Um, so I feel as though at the moment I have such a big list of plants and things that I want to make for spring. But something that I really want to get on with is 
something that I shared back in um, October time actually in my five patterns I want to sew for autumn and winter time video and that was the Anthea blouse by Anna Allen. So I really want to get those five things finished. Obviously we're coming towards the end of winter now but I think the two things that I have left on my list are going to work really well for sort of going into spring and summertime as well. If you do want to watch that video then I'll pop it here and down below. Um, you can pop over and see the five patterns that I really wanted to sew up for autumn and winter time. So yes the Anthea blouse is definitely up there on my next to sew list along with a couple of other things <laughs> um, but what I've done this time is actually had the pattern printed from the fold line so I brought the PDF pattern from the fold line and just paid the extra to have the pattern printed so I have it all here folded up nicely and ready to go and I need to cut that out and um, I love the fold line actually because they send you a nice little envelope like this that you can store your pattern in um, something that I really need to do, again, because I've only just recently done it, is go through all of my patterns. They are such a mess upstairs where I store them. I've just been throwing things everywhere. I've run out of plastic envelopes and I need to buy some more and I need to reorganise my patterns. And I was thinking of doing that as a video, so let me know if you think that would be an interesting video to watch. So yeah, that's one of the plans that I'd really like to get on with soon. And this is the fabric that I'm going to be using for the Anthea blouse. It's this lovely Atelier Brunette um, crepe fabric. It's so pretty and so lovely to work with. I've got the mustard colourway of this that I've used recently, so I know how lovely it is. The other thing I have left to make from that video is my Jessa trousers by Tilly the Buttons. And I also really want to get on with those because I think they will be a good one for spring and summertime. I'm loving the look of wide leg jeans at the moment, so I'd really like to get those made up. But I know they're going to be quite a a beefy project I need to do some fitting and things for those so so I really just want some time where I can have the head space to sort of think about those things as well so next I have a couple of new fabrics to share so recently um in last week's video I think I shared about my faux pas um error <laughs> in choosing fabric to make a south bank top so I had bought myself a chunky tubular rib knit fabric that I wanted to make a south bank top with but when it came um, I'd completely underestimated the amount of fabric that I'd ordered and I didn't have enough at all and also it just really wasn't the right fabric for a top it was more of a ribbing than a top so I've reordered a fabric that I want to use to make for the South Bank top and it's arrived. So this is another Minerva Core range fabric and it's a cotton rib knit fabric. It's got quite a wide, still quite a chunky rib knit but um, far less sort of sturdy and heavyweight than the other one was so I think this will be much nicer to wear. Unfortunately I couldn't get the same brown colour that I really wanted but I've gone for this pinky brown colour. I forget the exact name of this colour actually but I'll list it all below as I always do. So I think this will suit the South Bank top pattern far better than that rib knit and I do still really like this colour. It's definitely still one of my favourite colours. It's that dusky pink colour and I think it will work really nicely for springtime. So that's another thing that I really do want to get on with quite quickly because I just want to get things made for springtime. So even though at the moment in the UK it's pretty chilly still, the other day we had snow, <laughs> but we are well into March now, we're in the middle of March, so it should be warming up soon. And I'm really just thinking about having things ready to wear for when the weather does warm up. I mentioned in my video with Rachel when we were talking last week actually, about how nice it would be if you were organised enough to sew in summer for winter and in winter for summer so that when the season's here, the season's changed, you would have your handmade wardrobe all ready to go. But it just doesn't really work like that, does it? Because I think even if I was that organised, I would still be very distracted by all the new things and new patterns that came out and styles I wanted to sew and things like that. So yeah, I don't think it would ever really work, but it's a nice idea. So that's that fabric that I promised I would share when it arrived. Another fabric that I've received recently, and this is for my next Minerva Ambassador project. All of the fabrics that I'm sharing today are pretty much Minerva fabrics. <laughs> um, it wasn't intentional in any way, but I am shopping with them a lot at the moment. Um, so this one, yeah, is for my next project for them. And this is a really lovely velour toweling fabric. 
Um, and what I want to make with this is a dressing gown. So back a year or so ago, I made the Haley robe by Tammy Handmade, and I made it in a cotton fabric. And I really like the style of that dressing gown, um, but it's a cotton fabric, so it can only really be worn in like warmer weather. And for the colder months, I have this really cozy, but well on its last legs now, <laughs> woolly sort of fleece dressing gown with a big hood that I wear all the time. But as I say, it kind of is looking a bit shabby now and needs replacing. So I just wanted to make myself another cozy dressing gown. And um, yeah, this fabric I thought would work really nicely. So I've gone for a beige colorway because I love beige. And also I thought it would go with any pajamas then. So beige is always a good neutral, isn't it? And I love a beige. Um, so yeah, that's uh, another project that I need to get on with. I wasn't actually gonna do my ambassador project this month. I was gonna miss a month, but sometimes the fabrics are just too tempting to pass by and you all know how I've been saying about how I want to sort of limit what I'm making and the fabric that's coming into my life so I'm sorry <laughs> I couldn't resist this one so I've just added to my list but it was something that I've been meaning to make for a while so yeah it's something that I will get a lot of wear out of so I hope that kind of balances out the extra fabric coming in. <laughs> Lastly, very quickly, I just wanted to share this one. In my recent fabric haul video, um, I shared quite a lot of fabrics that I've picked up in the Minerva sale, and I have quite a lot of plans. And as I say, I wasn't really supposed to be bringing any more fabric in, but this one was also in my Minerva order, and it hadn't arrived at the time that I shared the video. And to be honest, I completely forgot about it. And then after the video, I thought, well, that's funny. Um, I didn't see that fabric in, it, in the order that had come in and this one was just on a back order because it was out of stock. So I thought I'd just quickly share it. It's another Atelier Brunette viscose fabric and it's in a navy colourway with um, just a sort of speckly design all over it. And with this fabric, I just wanted to make another Ogden cami. So in my recent fabric haul video where I shared all the fabrics, and all of my plans for my whole stash, basically. I said that I wanted to make a few more Ogden camis that I can wear underneath my knitted cardigans and shirts and things like that. So I have a lovely Atelier Brunette cream viscose fabric that I'm gonna be making an Ogden cami with. And um, yeah, I also had this one on order, as I say, that I'd forgotten about. So that arrived recently as well. So I thought I'd just share that. Another thing that I've received recently, which was very kindly sent to me by a lovely toy company um, online. They are on Instagram and also on Etsy called Minky and Friends. The lovely lady that runs the company designs and makes really, really cute soft toys made from Minky fleece. And um, she kindly sent me one of her kits because she knew how much I love to make soft toys and um, said would I like to sew one of her toys up. So I did jump at the chance and add to my sewing list. <laughs> so I've kind of been sent a kit to sew up one of her bunnies and I'll put an image in here so that you can see what the bunny looks like when it's been sewn up. I'm kind of um, not wanting to get this out of the packet because it's so nicely packaged. <laughs> but she sent everything that you need to make the bunny up. So it's got the minky, plush fabric um, for the actual bunny's body and then you can choose what clothing you'd like your bunny to make. So uh, I got my daughter involved as always and said what would she like the bunny to wear and we went for a little dress and you can choose what fabric you want for the dress as well. So we went for this green forest print um, fabric. So the kit actually comes with all of the instructions and the pattern and everything you need really to make up the bunny. If you can see at the bottom there, that's what the bunny looks like that I'm gonna be sewing up just with a different fabric dress. So I'm really excited to make this one up as well. I do love sewing soft toys at the moment, as you can probably tell, and um, I'm also enjoying knitting them as well. So yes, very excited to make that one up. So do pop over and check them out. I will link her page down below and her Etsy shop so you can go and have a look. She does sell the patterns on their own as well. So you don't have to buy the kit. You can just buy the PDF pattern and source the fabric yourself if you'd rather do that. So yeah, another exciting project to make up soon. And then lastly, I wanted to share a finished make. So this is something that I've been making for Minerva and um, yeah, I'm really excited about this because um, I'm quite proud of it actually. <laughs> so I've been making a pair of um, cargo pants from a new look pattern. I'll pop in the pattern here. Um, and yeah, this is for something for Minerva that's gonna be coming up in the future. 
Um, so stay tuned for that. But I thought I would show you the make today because as I say, I'm really proud of these. Cargo pants seem to be coming back in for this spring and summer time. So I was very excited to make these up and they were just such a lovely, lovely sew. So there are so many details in this pair of trousers um, because they've got that sort of utility style. There are loads of patch pockets to sew onto here, which I found very satisfying. I really enjoyed making these patch pockets and doing all the top stitching and everything. And um, yeah, very, very enjoyable to sew. So they've got side pockets as well with the buttons and the pocket flaps and everything. Um, and the waist is nice and elasticated. So I still haven't quite managed to get my fitted pair of trousers done yet. But I think this elasticated waist will be super comfy for the warmer months. And then the trousers are just rolled up at the bottom there with a button tab as well. So I wanted to show you those and let you know what I've been working on this week. It was quite a, a full on, um, well not full on because it was really enjoyable, but it did take a while to sew these, um, but it was enjoyable as well. because, As I say, I really enjoyed doing all the patch pockets and the top stitching and everything. So these are sewn from a lovely um, Gavacino fabric, I think it's called. So it's a nice twill fabric. So it's got a nice structure, but it does have a bit of softness and drape to the fabric as well. So they're really nice to wear actually, really comfy to wear as well. So more details will be coming out soon on these trousers. Um, so I'm looking forward to sharing more about them soon and the work that I have been doing with Minerva. Um, but yeah, I just really wanted to show you them today and let you know what I've been sewing this week. So I think that's everything I have to share with you today. I feel as though I've done a little bit of a like a brain dump really of everything I want to sew and make in the next few weeks or months. <laughs> um, so you can probably tell that I have a very busy mind at the moment full of things that I just want to make and sew and wear. Um, but it's really nice to be like that, isn't it? I really enjoy thinking about what I'm going to be making for the next season and the upcoming months and weeks. So stay tuned to see how some of those projects turn out. I'd love to know what you've been up to this week as well. And also, as always, let me know what you've been sewing and making and what your plans are for the upcoming spring and summertime. I know I keep talking about spring and summertime because I'm in the UK, but I am aware that if you aren't in the UK, you're probably going into a different season. So let me know what you're sewing for that season as well. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love you to subscribe. And if you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a like as well, because that does help me out with YouTube. Otherwise, take care, everyone. Have a lovely day and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.